about you? No, nah, I'm chilling, man. I'm maintaining, you know. I'm just trying to get interesting people on the show just so, you know, to make the, the content more interesting and shit. But um, no better person than yourself, man. We got Young Rock in the fucking building, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> now, um, I don't even know where to get started, man. I've known you for a while. You're doing your fucking thing, my nigga. That's first and foremost. I salute, I salute all producers doing their thing, and you're doing your thing on such a fucking large scale. It's very motivational, inspirational for people coming up or in the game now. And I just want to shout that out because, you know, I find that. And then you're from Jersey. That makes it even better. I'm not saying there's no stigma behind that because, you know, hard work mm -hmm. always prevails. That's the truth about the situation. Mm -hmm. now, it, now, as far as with you, though, now let's talk about the direction how you got to where you are you know we don't need to go dig full deep because i remember using the beat battles um mm -hmm. like i let me let me just get this off my chest and you could jump in any time but when i was telling okay. niggas about young rock and the beat battles because i was like yo there's a lot of cats i came up with that came through the beat battle circuit in jersey let alone the beat battle circuit in general but then it's like that's mm -hmm. when you see how it's a small world but then i was like yo there's a few cats that stood out you feel me? I was like, yo, I had a few joints. But then there was like Captain Planet. This nigga was just so left field. It was like, huh? And then yeah, it was like, yeah. you get what, if you remember him, I was like, yo. Yeah, yeah. And then there was like Young Rock. And you came, and I remember when you came to the championship, you came so left field. It was like, you know, the best way to put it, it was like to expect hip hop and get Captain Planet, but merged mm -hmm. with hip hop. If that makes any sense, because you get what I'm saying? It was like, it was hip hop, but it was like, yo, we wasn't expecting this nigga to fuck this shit up like this. You get what I'm saying? So now, from there, what how, what made you go? I don't want to say made you go because creativity is exactly that. It's, it's, it's no caption. There's no there's no ceiling for it. But what? How did you know you had something, or how did you know the direction you was going was the one you wanted to go in? You get what I'm saying? Like, break that down because it's, it's very interesting. Most definitely, I think it kind of found me. Like, I was just trying to, um, I guess, find a sound for myself. And then, um, uh, you know, I also, like, I had uh, idols like Just Blaze and Timbaland and things like that. Like, I kind of came up in that era where they were, like, you know, on, on, on top. So, like, I, I wanted to be, like, something like them. But, like, I ended up doing these beat battles and trying to, like, form my own sound. Like, combining their sound to make my own sound and um yeah man things just started like popping in a different direction and i started linking up with local artists such as bones from nook and and and, like, mm -hmm. and 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 linking up with people like jeff billings at the recording studio like around the corner from my house and uh, like um when it when it be like it's god's plan that's kind of like what happened like it was like god's plan to be in that situation Bro, I'm not even gonna hold you. Just hearing you break that little bit down is crazy. Cause like you said, God's plan is definitely real. I didn't know you. you the studio he ran was around the corner from your crib. Cause like, oh, really? think of convenience and timing. Cause I think that's a lot. Of, that's what a lot of people say in the industry. You know, timing is everything. And just to have mm -hmm. that. Cause think about it, like there's cats that I know now, or even say from in our era that was traveling from like Jersey City, Newark, uh, or Elizabeth, you know, to go to these far places, whether it be in you know local areas where we're from or where we're at. So I found that to be interesting. You get what I'm saying in the same sense. So um, it, it break that down, like how that came together was like, um, was it first sight, like yo, I need someone, da 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 da, or did you just come and just like yo, I'm a, this is my spot, I'm gonna take it, I'm a, I don't know, let me know. <laughs> I was just trying to find. I was just trying to find a home to be at. Like you know what I mean. Like coming where we come from, it's not. It wasn't too many like professional recording studios, recording studios that were like about their business and stuff like that. So it, it was it was hard for me to find a home and to have one that was like right around the corner. I just naturally just gravitated that direction. So um, and then you know through being there and stuff like that. You know, I, I got I gained experience in recording and dealing with different artists and different personalities and characters and stuff like that. And um and it, it did, yeah. I started, you know, the beat battle circuit and then um linking up with people that were involved in film and television and, and stuff like that. So that's 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 kinda how it happened. It's like you think back sometimes and you'd be like like it was almost like a domino effect, you know what I'm saying? No, big facts. 
I, I, and that's another thing too I want to say. Like I said, shout out to Bones, shout out to Jeff, and I say that collectively because I that's one thing that I like. Uh, and when I say that, because from the beginning, I don't know, man. You know, niggas is getting old. I say I remember when Young Rock didn't have a goatee. That's how that's how old niggas is. <laughs> but it's like y'all niggas. Well, from what from what I've seen, got at least fifteen years together. At least yeah. from what I seen, probably even more throughout the years. You get what I'm saying? But I'm mm-hmm. like, that's a that's a union that's crazy. I don't want to say crazy. It's beautiful. But now, how was it able to sustain itself? That's what I found. Because you, like you said, dealing with different personalities. You got a rapper. You got a um a, a label um label head, and then you got a producer. Mm-hmm. So you know they all want different things. You know, some pull, some give, some. So how did that? Mm-hmm. I found that beautiful, man. Because you know we see it today or throughout history. Those relationships don't really prosper, but you guys have proven it can work and it will work. So break that down. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, I think this is the thing of um, respecting each other's boundaries and, and things like that. Like you know, we, we all we all we all are good. At, we all have special skills at something. You know what I mean? We all are good at something. And um, like as long as you kind of not just stay in your lane but grow together. That's that's what makes kind of things happen. You know what I mean? And it's like things have shifted in a different direction. Was like you know, I own my own company now. Bones owns this own company. We have a company together where we produce the tracks and doing things, and we still collaborate and work closely with Cobblestone for sure. Like we teaching you know teaching youth and at risk youth uh, music production and film and Bone teaches writing and is doing artwork that. So it's just like it's just a mutual respect, which I think is more important than like anything. You know, everybody always has has their issues and it goes through things and stuff like that. This is a part of growing and growing up. But Absolutely. you know, we always look at the bigger plan. We always look at the bigger mission. I think that's more important. No, and that's a fact. And, and and like everything that you were saying is that even from you breaking it down, I could hear that there's a lot of support there. Whether it be mm-hmm. for you towards Bones, Bones and um, Jeff towards you, because you feel me, it's like just like how you said it. You you have your own company. You and Bones and partner made your own company. I don't know if that's independent mm-hmm. or subsidiaries of what you guys have a co- cobblestone, but just that growth, you know, just seeing like yo, do your own thing, Rock. Do your own. You get what I'm saying, Bones? Do your own mm-hmm. thing, like, and that that's beauty, because you know, like like I said, like even in the industry, we could see it from what is prevalent and what's from behind the scenes. It's like. People, nah, they trying to lock you down. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They trying oh, yeah. to lock you. They try to keep you in a box forever. Like, no. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, <laughs> I don't like no lock doors. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now, you know, there's so much shit I want to talk about. Because now when you just said you got you out here teaching now, I think cause I, you've been teaching for a minute. You've been teaching, or at least from what I've seen, for a couple, at least five plus, probably yeah. more. But you get what I'm saying? So um, how did you get into that lane? And what, what's the passion that drew you to that? You get what I'm saying? Because I oh, wait. And just before I finish, because kids, kids. Well, I don't want to say kids. Kids who are interested are easier to teach. But kids in general, bro, they could be a little bit. <laughs> so, so... Um, I, I, I wasn't interested in teaching at first. So that happened through um through Jeff Billingsley as well through Cobblestone and his connections with uh, Rutgers and Essex County College okay. that allowed um that allowed us to get into um teaching. It was like you know through his connections, like okay, we can bring some music production programs to these colleges mm. and, and these like GED programs and things of that nature and teach. You know, it's, it's always a need. Music isn't everything, you know what I'm saying? It's also a healing, uh, a source of healing, too. Yeah. So it was just natural. Like, once that started popping, it was like, all right, look, we can start. We can, it's a, This is another avenue that we can make money in and also help the community as well. Absolutely. You give back, you teach, you learn, and now the next generation. Because the thing is, I think um, I had, uh, I think, Ment Plus on the podcast the other day. Mm-hmm. And he said something that was so true. It's like, look, because he's into teaching as well, because he's like, look, whether it be me directly giving you the tools you need to get, get what you need done, or, excuse me, he either being the mm-hmm. inspiration that you needed to get what you need done. Because, you know, that, think about it in hindsight, like, say, like, 
I'm just to bring it back, like, you know, say may, may, say some cats didn't have the equipment or the means to get to a, a school to learn. But then again, just hearing their favorite producer, Young Rock, cook up some crack. That's all they needed to be like, yo, I got to get in the fucking... If you, if you get what I'm saying, like, that's that's the same inspiration. That goes... It goes two, it goes twofold, at least, when I look at it. You feel me? The same way people, like, inspired me to, 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 to be involved in music and music production and things like that, I want to be able to inspire somebody else. You know what I mean? It's going to be somebody that comes after me that says, I want to do this and I want to... I want to do it the way he did it. You know what I mean? They, sure. they'll, they'll make their own style and it'll continue. No. And hopefully, you know, their music has a message to it as well. No, very important. Very important. Mm -hmm. Especially when you try here teaching and communicating now. And now a thing that I find interesting too, as far as what you teaching, um, you do a lot. So what do you exactly teach? Not, not, not trying to sound crazy because mm -hmm. over the years I've seen your growth and you're like, your resume is like, bro. So when you're teaching, is it more like on the engineering, the programming, um, music theory, or you're doing everything? Like, look, we got a curriculum and boom, boom, bow. Yeah, we do have a curriculum, but the funny thing is, like, you know, the, the way we have to teach nowadays because of the youth's um, attention span and things like that, we kind of <laughs> got to be a little bit more fluid, yeah. So... Little niggas bouncing <laughs> off the wall and shit. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, but you know they 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 get it, they understand it, and you know they they they, they, they calm down when once the music gets to going and they start playing and they hitting the keyboards and stuff like that, they 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 calm down. Um, <laughs> I try not to stick too much in the theory uh too much because I don't want to lose them. Okay. And sometimes you know with the theory is it, it takes a lot of uh it does take a lot of focus and they don't have a problem focusing. It's not, that's, not, that's not what I want to say, okay. but it, it can be a lot, and I don't want to deter them from looking at, like, oh, well, you know, you can mix your song, or you can, you can have somebody else, and you can add the drums, and it's, it's other ways for you to make it happen that also can, will make you and consider you to be a producer as well, too. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be the ones actually touching the instruments. You know what I'm saying? But if you could put your ear to it and say, like, we can do it like this, you know. So it's it's, diff it's different ways. A lot of the students that are in our class, they don't play, you know. They might not even rap or even sing, but they 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 can they can hold the camera. You know what I'm saying? They can hold the camera. They can they can mix. They can record. They can push the record button and, and do playback. And so it, we try to keep it like as um as easy uh, for them to understand and, and cater to their ability. No, absolutely. I think that was an excellent breakdown because just like, like I said, throughout your resume and, and just seeing how much you do in the industry or with music, you could say there's a job for everyone. You don't have to produce. You can mix. You can master. You can do live sound. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could do theory. You could teach music. You know, mm -hmm. it gets, um, you know, it, it gets really, it gets that deep. You could, you could fucking wire studios. Like, yeah. I didn't know that was a high paying gig. Bro, yeah. come in. We need to wire the fucking <laughs> like, we don't record it all. They just build studios. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like, but when you see that element of it, like, look, you don't have to actually be doing this. But then I find it more interesting. Like, say, a lot of people, whether it be in the industry now or say found their way in the industry, was say, I was trying to be a rapper. I was trying to be a producer, mm -hmm. and then another door opened up, and it was like, hey, I didn't know we could do this. And I was like, I find that interesting, you know, because like, there's so much. Like, say nowadays, like. Cause you know, I'd be a little winded with talking, but it's like, I see the technology and everything evolving. So with that, do you see like a new direction of music? Um, like to give an example, who would have thought, bro, look, look, fuck an example. I'll give you a true story. I think it was like mm -hmm. 2008 or something. I went to Quest Studio and mm -hmm. you know, we was cooking some shit up. And we had a banger and he was like, yo, um, how do I tag y'all niggas? You know, y'all on Facebook or mm -hmm. Twitter and... No cap, bro. Niggas wasn't even on. I didn't even know what the fucking shit was. Like, I knew what Facebook was, but I was like, Twitter. Mm -hmm. I was like, but shit, it was like, what? And then you mm -hmm. fast forward to now. Social media, if you're not on social media, either promoting, uh, recruiting, or anything, it's like mm -hmm. you're missing like 80% of your audience. I hate exactly. That. Is, is that number even that? Like, it's like, it's that big now, like almost 80%. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a form of free promotion. It's almost like, yo, it's almost to the point now, if, if you're not on it, promoting your brand or promoting your product or service, you're almost kind of like non-existent, you know what I mean? Right. And and at least 
like you said, 80, 80, 90 percent easily, you know, get lost. And, and it's so many people that do what we do that if you're not on there, you're not now, you're not competing with or, or, or in the same lane as, as these people that do the same thing that you do. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be on there, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Definitely. Because then, mm -hmm. like you said, the competition now, because like mm -hmm. I think we just said social media, but when you think technology, this, and I hate to keep referencing back, but you know, we got a little history, but when you remember the beat battles, niggas was bringing mm -hmm. full fucking computers. I remember I yeah. brought my full computer to that shit. Desktop, not yeah. a laptop, a desktop. And now mm -hmm. you, you see, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now you see where shit is going as far as like, and I say that because of competition. Before you needed to get like an NPC or buy a computer. But I saw shit niggas is cooking up on an iPad iphone you mm -hmm. get what i'm saying mm -hmm. but then again mm -hmm. like i said it's, it's creativity like the tools don't never the tools should never keep you back it's the skills that really make you talented but now when we see that in the direction like shit is like you know it's like what do you think as far as like the competition for the new producer i'm not saying for you but for like i feel like it's overwhelmed i feel like when we was doing beat battles it was like 50 of us Word. it was like fifty thousand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, the um the equipment has become uh cheap uh not cheap but easily affordable for people you know you can have a you can set up a studio in, in your closet you know what i'm saying just your laptop your mic and the keyboard and this and that i mean it was kind of like that back then but it was still a little bit different it took i guess it took more skill yeah. and, and you could tell the difference you know what i'm saying there's other producers you you walk into a room full of other producers they'll know you know what i'm saying they could tell <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean? so it definitely changed, and I think that um, hopefully, I hope that music goes in a direction where it's not fully automated, where you just you know dropping in, you know just dropping in loops and and just and and just you know throwing some drums on it. It's, I mean, I, I'm cool with that too. I've done that too. It's, that's nothing wrong. With, but I don't want the music just to be like everybody's stuff starting to sound alike. You know what I'm saying? So. And there's more lanes. There's more lanes and more opportunities because of social media too. No, oh, very true. Very true. I wait. And the other thing is, I think social media have created. I the way influencers that was created yeah. through social media. If I'm exactly. not correct, influ that wasn't even existed say ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Influencer. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, like, you're absolutely right. And now, when you see like as far as now, and it's funny that you say that, is because. Like I said, I ain't got no problems. I chop up. I do a little. I, I feel like I'm sample based, and I I know a little bit of theory. I felt that going back mm -hmm. to school and learning that was important. Now I mm -hmm. only reference this to Ment Plus podcast because you you said it just now. It's because we was talking because he learned music theory too, and I'm like, damn, this is crazy. I feel like the older we get, and you know, music theory is a must. In the beginning, it's like, eh. and now it's like, yeah, we mm -hmm. gotta you, we gotta know this shit. And it's like, you know, I feel like you're, you're right. You get what I'm saying? You're mm -hmm. right. And like I agreed with him, but it was to the point that like how could I say is that I feel like the equipment now, like you said, automate everything. They got the control, the complete S1. When I saw that, I'm not even gonna hold you, it got me mad. I didn't buy it because it got me mad. And if you get if you understand why, like bro, niggas had to learn this shit the hard way. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that when the Nexus came out. That when they came out with the Nexus keyboard and you just like push the one button and it starts running through all these it was crazy. Mm -hmm. You you and, and now it's like I'm saying I'm not I'm not hating because I understand it's like one, it's a cash grab, and two, it's a new generation. Like this new generation, they're not I don't want to say they're as patient they're not as patient as us. But when you mm -hmm. grow up having everything, you don't have time to learn to, to, to figure shit out from nothing. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we didn't grow up, I, I, I could speak for it, like, I, I didn't grow up with internet. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, mm -hmm. niggas was in the crib figuring shit out. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? And when internet came, yeah, like you said, it wasn't Google, it was like Yahoo. Like, like mm -hmm. damn, niggas is showing their age, but fuck it. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, but... I'm, it's just seeing it now and I'm like, yo, this shit is really pushing the, it's pushing boundaries and I like that because we're getting better music. I don't want to say better in the sense of like talent, but we're getting better quality because it's now it's easier for people to just pump the shit out. You get what I mean? That yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. So it's like, yo, it's you got the thought, you can get it out your head without even, so I think in that sense, we're getting more music that's easier, like for better people, for people to produce. But then again, I think it's like, I don't want to say it's hindering them because 
there's many famous producers who never learned to music theory, but yeah. they know music yep. theory. But the thing, but I find that to be like an oxymoron. You don't know it, but you understand the language. If you, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> the Beatles, the Beatles didn't know how to read or write music. So, like you know, they rock hit. You know, even though you know they take rock and roll from us, but that's another. <laughs> yeah, no, we can talk all that shit. You feel? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But now, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just fascinating, though. But now, I say that just the transitions and set, just the way like everything is going, like. Um, cause if I remember, I think you was on reason when I met you, I don't know what you're using now. You don't have to disclose the secrets, but reason, reason is on 10 now. And I say that because I remember when it wasn't no VSTs, it wasn't no DAW. Um, so I don't know if you're still using it or just sit like an MPC force. I want to pick your brain on all of these. So we'll take our time, but what do you, what's okay. your thoughts? let's start with reason. What's your thoughts on reason? Or do you still um, use it? it? And do you think the, oh, <laughs> just to cut in Cleachy said the same thing Bruh, oh, Cleachy, Cleachy, shout out shout out <laughs> and shout, shout out to quest too that i'm glad that you mentioned quest because quest was the first one that um that put me on the reason and he also as well showed me how to use it bro you know it's so yeah. crazy Double shout out, cause Quest was mm -hmm. also the nigga who put me on the reason. <laughs> and he put me on Recycle, man. Shout out to Quest. <laughs> I never, I never rock with Recycle. I don't know why I never. I always wanted to use it in, in you know, in combination, but yeah. I never did. I'm not gonna lie. In hindsight, it it was it was, it was over cumbersome because it was an extra program to import to another program. But then at the time, I feel, but then again, this just shows how how much fucking like the DAWs evolved. There was a point in time that DAWs didn't have sample chopping. Mm -hmm. I feel that old just so talking weird. about this shit. Think mm -hmm. about that chopping, not even not a sample, but like chopping audio. That was like, nah, like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't going down. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, but um, but it, it, it's crazy though. So now. When you use reason, um, like I said, don't give out the trade secrets. But Cleachy, mm -hmm. Cleachy, he's more into the sound design. Are you more into like the programming, or you're sound designing as well? I'm more like programming. I don't, I don't like to dig into the sound design. Um, I like to just create and go. Okay. So a lot of the times, um, you know, I, I find my sounds wherever I can find them, and in my inspiration, I might tweak some sounds and stuff like that, but. Sound design is just, it was a, it's not for me. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad. Wait, making music, you get lost in it for hours and hours at end. Sound design is like a tunnel inside that tunnel. <laughs> Bro, I'm real, real. Before you even make the beat, like, sound is not me. <laughs> Yo, wait, it's so true. I've known niggas who went into sound design and never came back. Like they were oh. making, bro. They never came back. They doing patches. They doing all types of shit now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like shit. Uh, but like you mm -hmm. said, I, I'm not ready to go down that hole. You feel me? I was like, I was one. I was one foot in, and I was like, bro, this is like a whole session right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. This a bias, yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. so, so now with that, you know, like you said, you find your own sounds and I, I, I love that too. I like digging. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've bought a few kits throughout the years mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, it's cool. It happens. We in the game, man. And I create a few shit, but I actually, I like finding shit, creating shit, putting it together. I like Jake one. I like a lot of his shit. It's kind of gritty mm -hmm. and dirty, mm -hmm. but, um, but the point to be said is what do you think about splice? Cause that's taking, um, my man's hit me like, I'm, I'm like, like, you got to get on it. Yeah, I fuck with Spice, yo. I fuck with Spice. Um, I like their drum sounds and their hits. You know what I mean? I try to stick away from the loops and stuff like that. Or if I do, like, find a loop, I'll twist it up in a way where it doesn't even sound like anything. But I just it's a tool for inspiration. Like, and it's, especially when it comes to the drum sounds. Like, if you need you need any type of drum sound, eight ninety nine a month. You know, you you need you need a a dirty vintage. Uh, uh, snare or something like that. No. Type it in. You find it. It's right there. You download it. It's yours. You know. Mm. So can't not go true. wrong with this. Yeah, not. Well, you uh, 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 Kesh, one of the one of the guys, Keshmer. 
he got he got caught like jacking like some uh some sounds from like or some ideas from like Doom the uh the video game. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. But like they they've had some, a few issues and I, I still think they they're working out their kinks and stuff like that when it comes to that. Mm. But I use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's 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 like you said, it's for inspiration. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful source, and and like I said, like I hate referencing back to the old times, but it's like this is shit that we didn't have. And think about it. Yeah. Think about how many niggas fucked up computers downloading free drum kits. Word. <laughs> mm-hmm. You get what ah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it, 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 and when you look at it now, it's like this is the fucking. It's, it's not only is it the future, but it's more convenient, man. You know, like you said, it's, it's on the go. I think you take it everywhere with you, and then you know, and then again, it's like you may you don't might not want to take spend forty minutes making drums. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> go straight into it. Yeah, yeah, just go straight mm-hmm. into it, man. So now, um, as far as the hardware goes, because you're using the reason for programming, um, mm-hmm. I see you gotten very musical over the years, and I love that. I love that. Thank you. you feel me? Keep, keep going. Don't ever stop, bro. Honestly, bro, this shit is like, bro. You, it's just like I said, it's inspiring, bro. Like I said, it's very Thank inspiring. You. Um, and I have no problem saying that. You get what I'm saying? Because I draw inspiration from everyone. You feel me? Mm-hmm. As long as the shit's fucking hot, bro. If I could catch whiplash to the shit, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, and now, but with that being said, is um, I damn, I lost my train of thought. Shout out to the weed. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, fucking um, but look, we'll just we'll just go into the next thing that um, what's oh the oh yeah the hardware. Um, what are you using? Um, or if you're using anything, cause you feel like um, I don't see you use anything. That's why I ask. Is either, I don't. I, I see was guitar and keyboard. I like to stay mobile, so um, I have a um, I have a MacBook Pro, um, 2017 MacBook Pro. That, that's that's my workhorse. Um, I have two of them. You know, just one. You know, steadily working on the side. Um, I like to keep. I, I just keep my interface, my MacBook, my Reason. I have Logic, um, all inboard. Most of most equipment I use is inboard. If I'm at a certain spot, I might use some outboard gear and stuff like that. But I like to keep everything on a, on, on the go. Um, I have some. Um, I have. I do have some outboard Sims. Um, I can't think of the, it has a vocoder built into it. Um, this church I think for gave it to me and stuff like that, but I like to keep I like to keep it simple. That's just me, you know what I mean? Okay. And now mm-hmm. is that is that by choice? And when I say by choice, it's because did you know you were gonna be mobile was the aim, or was it? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't a need? Because um, before you answer it, I just want to say this is because over the years I've always been fascinated with gear. I love the drum machines mm-hmm. and all the shit. And I say that because I see now in my latter years, I'm cooking up some of my best shit with a keyboard and a mouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being I'm being dead serious. You get what I'm saying? I got a broken machine right here. This bitch don't even... I dropped the shit, the fucking USB port fucked up, and that was that. And wait, I, I was like, yo, one monkey don't stop the show. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. But I, I, I look at it as like, yo, whatever works for you, whatever works for you, as long as the sound ends up coming out good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I would love, I would love to have like a ton of gear. You know what I mean? I would love to have that. But you know, I have to uh, uh, be conscious of, uh, you know, what I'm getting or what I need. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, all these in, the inboard stuff, like, especially with like reason and stuff like that. Like, yo, you can. Well, I don't need a thousand dollar outboard sim for a mixer if everything I need is built into the system itself. You know what I'm saying? So, true. so like, we do have like some 16 channel board mixers and stuff like that if I need to record like some drums and things like that. But it's a case by case base. You know what I mean? It's a case by case base. I like to rent. Sometimes I like to rent studios and. And we could work out of there. It's like various studios have various needs, and they they have the outboard stuff that we would need. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. it's a case by case situation. You know the thing is funny though is you're absolutely right. Um, like I said, it's um because I think this this will help transition to the next topic. But it's mm-hmm. um uh, one I have I haven't gotten the urge like I'm not even gonna hold you. I haven't gotten the urge to buy gear in such a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, because everything like the digital stuff. 
like granted there's there's some shit that i hear and i'm like this this sounds fake as fuck and there's some shit that yeah. sounds like wow this sounds really good this sounds really mm-hmm. fucking good now I'm only saying that like it's gotten really good over the years because I remember I, I I see interviews with professionals or I even go into studios with some like 30 year vets and they tell me Pro Tools in the beginning was shit. Yeah, <laughs> they was like they was like it took it was like it wasn't until five until that shit was usable and it was still mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And it's like. But then just to see the growth over years and I'm like, no, absolutely. But then now shit is like you said, all I need is a laptop. I don't even need a keyboard because I figured out how to play the shit on the fucking, um, the, on the key. On the key. Yeah. Right on the key. You get what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm, I'm good. I'm like, shit, like you said, and you, all you need is your interface, headphones, and you're there, you're cooking up. You good. You, you don't need nothing more. Now I, I, I only explain all that is because now the MPC or Kai just dropped the MPC force. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh man, yeah, they. they... You've always been ahead of the technology. You've always been ahead of the technology. Shout out to your YouTube channel too. I, I <laughs> like I told you, I, I discovered it by accident. I was like, yo, this, this, this is pit right here. <laughs> yo, to a forum, yo, that's just dope. <laughs> appreciate mm-hmm. you. Appreciate. I gotta put more content up, but no, definitely, my mm-hmm. nigga. Um, but it, it, just like the timing, man, but balancing so much shit, but um. But like you said, no, I, I, I peep game, and now I'm only mm-hmm. I'm only bringing it up is because the MPC was a very dynamic part of my production career, only mm-hmm. because I learned a lot about sample chopping, chord progressions, drum programming on an MPC. That's all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the only reason I give it that. So, but outside of that, in hip hop. The MPC 60, the 2000, the X, it has earned his name as being like the, the, the significant or the iconic hip hop machine. Now, get all the history out the way. They dropped the MPC Force as an all in one uh, system, touchscreen, Ableton Ooh. push pads, um, uh, touch sensitive, own operating system, mm-hmm. built in computer, uh, audio interface. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not even going to fucking lie to you. As far as technology goes, that shit's fire. Fire. Yeah. I'm just waiting. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. on the strength of technology, I don't want to get these lines blurred. As far as mm-hmm. practicality, need, and usability, I don't think. That's I, don't, okay. I don't see someone dropping their setup right now. To be like, yo, I'm working exclusive force. on the force. Cause think it's like it you could it's it's like the MPC two thousand. You could out you could track shit out. But as far as it interfacing mm-hmm. like a no, this doesn't interface like a VST. This doesn't no, it's its oh. own shit. Everything you do is inside this. It got its own plug in. It. You get what I'm saying? It got and I'm not gonna lie, I could see someone getting that or see some like right now. Like say technically, like say this was like fifteen years ago, and I had fifteen hundred, mm-hmm. and it was like yo, we either get the MPC, the zip disk, the whole, you know, the little, little, little MPC care package. Mm-hmm. You you feel me? Or get that? Yeah. I'll get that. It's a computer. It's all in. Mm-hmm. And I'm just I'm just saying. But like, when you look at time now, bro, a nigga could build a computer for five hundred bucks, buy an MPC or a used machine, and get it cracking off way better. Or get a laptop in a used machine. It's a whole studio now, dude. Yeah. Or a mini, a, a decent setup. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, it, it's it's to the point that I'm not hating on it. But then again, like someone like like yourself, what's your thoughts on it? Do you see yourself moving to? Matter of fact, the best way I forgot the name of the keyboard, but you remember the shits back in the day with the keyboards with the touch screen. It ran Windows. It had all the plugins on it. A Timbaland had one. The Nico. It's the Nexus, right? No, the, the, the Nico. Nico. Yes. I said Nexus, the Nico. Yep. Yeah, the I remember Nico. that. Yes. That, it's, 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 that's it. the one. Mm, that's the keyboard that made me say, I was like, oh shit. Okay, shit done changed. <laughs> yep. Polo the Dom produced a lot of records off yep. of that. Yep. Yeah. The Nexus. I remember it. Um, no, the, the, yeah, the ne- Nico. I forgot. Now I'm calling it the Nexus. <laughs> but it, 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 I'm not going to lie to you. The shit was hella dope. But then if you think about it, that shit faded out. We, we struggled yeah, to remember did. the shit. 
That shit was super popular too. That shit wasn't like it was. Yeah, like if you walked into a studio and niggas had that, you was like, oh, you ain't fucking around. That shit was like five racks. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It was yeah. Like, shit. Now. Timbaland was using it. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. That's just going to show you too, like tech, technology. That shit can come and go, yo. Yeah. But the MVP still stands. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it's just a funny story. It's like, do you see yourself ever moving to that end of after using the Nico and now seeing? I will say this is the Nico part too, because that's basically what it is mm -hmm. all in one unit. Do you see yourself ever you moving to a unit like that or using shit like that mm. in a practical way? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a possibility. I'll use anything. You know what I mean? I think I'll use anything if it's accessible. Um, I haven't had, like I said, I haven't had the need to, but like, you know, anybody bring an instrument or anybody bring anything to, to, uh, to be a part of something that we're doing, I'm willing to use it. I'm willing to try it. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just, that's just how I've been. Like anything that make music, I always tell, I just used to tell people like, yeah, Yo, you could bring a bucket and some sticks down here. Like we, we, and a mic, we good. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I got another question. Cause you said mm -hmm. you run two MacBooks side by side. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Now, mm -hmm. How, Not together. How, you, you, wait, wait, together. So at the same time. No, no, not not oh, together. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Not mm -hmm. together. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I was about to say, my nigga rock on some. Oh no, 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 no! no. I, ain't... I ain't Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> he in 2020 already, nigga. We did... <laughs> now, um. The next question I gotta ask, man, I just got a few more, man, but you know, it's been a great mm -hmm. talk. Um, how, how did you start getting into the fucking um, music theory? And I asked that because I feel like, how can I put it? I know you've mm -hmm. always been musical with it, but I just feel like it was one day you was just always making fucking heat, heat, heat. And I was like, yo, who's this nigga playing the guitar on my Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. And then it's like, oh mm -hmm. shit, he ain't fucking around, fucking around. So mm -hmm. like, if you if you know what I mean, so is is it is it a, was it was it a surprise to me or did you just like was it all I don't know, I'm I'm up, you know, was or was it a slow transition into it? Let me know. I think it was it, it was a slow transition into it. Um I started playing um I started playing keyboard when I was seven. Mm. Um, I started playing keyboard when I was seven, and then I, I kind of like fell off and off of it. And then um, I started playing guitar when I was thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still dipping, dabbling on the keyboard like that, but I didn't gain interest in um, music production until yeah, uh, excuse me, started playing guitar until I was about thirteen. And then, um, and then about age fifteen, that's when I I linked up with um, uh, fourteen or fifteen, somewhere around there. And I said, "Yo, I want to start getting into music production." And then he told, you know, he told me like, "Yo, I got reason. Like, let me show you how to, how this works." I'm like, "All right, cool." And I made my first beat. I think at like fifteen. And then, um, then I said, "Okay, I right, in order for me to make beats or make uh, better beats or get better production, I need to." start um playing the piano so then i started getting back into the piano again and then that's when you know things started elevating i started really studying music theory by this time i'm like 16 17 and then i started picking back up the guitar again you know and, and training myself and things like that so that's kind of how that happened and over the years you know you just progress you know no absolutely so, absolutely because you're a one-man band at this point right um, yeah, but I, 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 it's funny that you say that because I'm putting, I, I got, I got some people that I work with that we, we're putting together a band and, and, um, trying to do some competition stuff. Yeah. Oh, look, look wait, an actual, an actual fucking band. Let me fucking Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> this, nigga, yeah. 
nigga fucking dropping bombs on me. Shit. <laughs> so wait, hold up. So you doing like a soul funk band or a hip hop band? Or let, let, let me know. All, all of that. Soul funk, R&B, pop. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to spread like the love, the message of love and, and stuff like that through music. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, like all, all our styles that we created, a little bit of rock and roll. You know what I mean? Mm. Like we we just trying to put it together. I'm trying to put like a, a a collective, a network together. That's 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 the proper word for it. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, okay, you know, opportunities that come, you know, opportunities come and go, but it, it really don't mean nothing if you can't pass these opportunities and and and, and what what I've kind of like learned and dealt with over the years onto other people, then it, it would I don't want it to just die, you know, with what we doing. You know what I'm saying? It's time for us to grow that shit into something else. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. And you know what's mm-hmm. interesting too, what you said is that from what you just broke down, I'm not gonna lie to you. And no no look. It, it, it is when you use reason, I thought you used it on the strength of that you probably went to IAR. But you feel me? You just used it because that was just the first one in front of you type situation. Yes. Oh, wow. That's mm-hmm. interesting. That's interesting, man. Shout out to fucking Reason, bro. It's surprising because, like, you know, I'm thinking like FL or I don't know, Cubase or some of these other shits would have been more popular. But I think Reason was the fucking sneak, a sleeper in the fucking in every studio. If you didn't have Reason, it bro, was. you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now my last question, man, and I'm going to let you be is that with the production, and I found it interesting because, you know, we all came up at the same time, and then you went into a different totally direction, and I found it interesting is that you started doing TV and um, film. Now, I... (coughs) Excuse me. I see Mm -hmm. you, and I'm like, wait, that's a huge different, a huge different lane, and then I'm like, I was curious, and then when I saw what you was doing, I was like, oh, my man who does film as well told me, he's like, oh, yeah, this is a way bigger bag. He's like, oh, yeah. he's like, this is a way bigger bag than fucking um mm-hmm. placing for these rappers you doing. And I'm like, what? What you mean? Because he's saying you get the royalties worldwide. Now, we don't got to get into all that. It's just the fact of the matter is that you went into that direction. I find that interesting because, you know, a lot of cats are still trying to produce for, you know, their favorite rapper and shit. And there's nothing wrong with that still. But mm-hmm. what, what attracted you to the film and TV um end of it? Um, more so, or at least want to juggle both at the same time. Let me know. That that that, that kind of found me, like like like, you know, like um, it was weird. it was like I you know I was doing the beat battle thing, and shout out to I Standard uh, Music, uh, shout out to Black Forty Five and Meet the Producers. Like that was my start. You know what I'm saying? Big you know, guy. even like you know, working with y'all, like Captain Hook, like yo, like. You know what I'm saying? That, that was where the start was. And then I, I you know, I ended up um linking up with Austin, the producers, and then heading out to New York and doing various things and ended up running into a um music publisher out there it was like, yo, you you have an opportunity to do stuff for film and TV. And I like it didn't even cross my mind. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the time. I was like, yeah, all right, you send some tracks, all right, cool. And then um, they, you know, they started sticking. And then I said, okay, this is this, this is this might be something here. You know what I'm saying? Like this might. You know, I, we've met managers and stuff like that. You know, throughout the years, who, who manage artists. Then the industry can be a little funny and shit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So it just didn't go that direction. Um, I, I've had some success with that, but um, my main my main success and my main goal is to tell stories. Or to help tell stories through with music, and it just so happened that that happens to be through um, film, video, and documentaries and things like that. So if I could help uh, expose something that needs to be out in the public, or idea, or concept, or or issue that we have, in, especially in our communities and stuff like that, music can help that. So I feel like so that's I like calling. You know what I mean? So. That ended up happening, and it's continuing to happen now. Like I said, I want to um, spread that to artists and music uh, musicians and stuff like that that I know, and you know, help put them on, on to that uh, type of way that they are not used to. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to be in front of the camera. I'm like, it's opportunities behind the cameras. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 
That's the, wait, and that's a big fact. And I find that to be a beautiful story how you broke it down. Because even in the beginning, you said, you was like, yeah. But then when it came full circle, I'm like, <coughs> I find that interesting because one, one, one reason I find it interesting because right now, even if you ask like 10 producers, I'm not even saying this in a disrespectful manner, but I don't even think none of them is even thinking film and TV, like out of the 10, mm-hmm. like you're coming up. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying disrespectful to anyone now in the game with experience, but you know, coming up, I don't even think they're thinking film and TV or the, know the value behind a, a Super Bowl ad. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or, or some of those placements. Cause, um, it, you know what I'm saying? Like this, these are really huge. And then it's like, absolutely. No, absolutely. Abs- absolutely, my nigga. And now I-, I find it interesting now in the teachings, just to try to cross sec what you said earlier, are you teaching kids about the different opportunities in the industry too? Or is it just more so in the production end? <laughs> um, yeah, both. Um, both. Like we teaching them um, the behind the scenes of the music industry, the reality of the music industry that, um, you know, the images and stuff like that that are displayed to us in our community is not what's really actually happening happening behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? And exposing them to the idea, like, yo, you don't have to talk about the fact that you can sell a million drugs or or, or can shoot a hundred people, you know what I'm saying? And we, we're trying to um, expose them to the idea, like, yo, like the images that you see on television is not what it really is. You know what I'm saying? The industry, music, we run the music industry. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, we don't run the music industry. We are the music industry. We, it just so happened to be ran by a, another group of people, you know what I'm saying, who, who exploit our talent and stuff like that. So. If we could tell them that, and like a lot of the youth that we deal with are locked up or incarcerated or have been incarcerated, and and, and um, we just try to help them in that manner, and also expose them to an industry or a side of the industry that they don't get to see often. You know what I'm saying? They don't get to tell, they don't get to see like, okay, this black lawyers that handle um, the paperwork for these artists or this cinematographers that shoot this stuff and A and Rs and all this stuff. Now, all they see are artists. And the girls, you know what I'm saying? And the money. So we kind of helping that in that fashion. No, nah, that's so that's so true, man. Everything is bro, like yo, you, you hit the fucking nail on the head, man. Cause everything you just said just made me think about the, the shit BET's doing now, like the um the rules to the shit. And <clears throat> excuse mm-hmm. me. And now I don't know if you've seen mm-hmm. them, but it's like mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful what they're doing because they're opening the platform. And they're finally keeping it real with the one, the youth. Cause I find that to be cause think about it. The people that who's trying to be rappers, trying to get in the game, the hungry ones who's like you said, seeing the money, the girls and all that. It's the young kids, you get what I'm saying? They in the studio, mm-hmm. they double cupping and all. I ain't mad at you, nigga. Turn up, make that heat. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But then but then at the same time, it's like they got to tell them the truth of the situation. It's like, yo, look, you're going to get in here. This nigga's going to try to rob you. They're going to try to jerk you. They're going to try to take your publishing. Mm-hmm. They're going to try to do all type of wild shit. You feel me? You're going to think that they go fret. That you're going to think they're your friends. They're going to be snakes with smiles on their faces. So you can't mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't see that in the, in the video shoot, in the video, you know, in the edit. <laughs> you feel mm-hmm. me? It, and this is shit is all fucking facts, man. And then the thing that's crazy is that I think in one of the episodes, the dude said, it's nobody's business to tell you about business. And I was like, yeah. that shit was so fucking deep. That shit hit my heart. Because I'm like, bro, I, I always say, it's like, yo, if I knew now what I know, that now what I, that, you know, I'm cooking. But you know the fucking the shit I'm trying to say. It's like, it's like, but it's like, my yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's like, I found out, like, yo, that's just real shit, though. That's real shit. But I feel like it, it's too late. I don't want to say it's too late. You feel me? They're still, they're doing it and, it, and it's appreciated. But they should have been doing this, like, in the early 2000s. Like, they should have been, you feel me? Like, if I feel like now they open in the, 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 the back curtain, you feel me, to profit off it in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like, you feel me? I thought they made money already. Now, now they want to uh, talk about expose the truth of yeah, the industry. You know yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I'm like, come on, man. Y'all should have been, if anyone, y'all should have been on the front lines of this shit, exposing the truth. I always, say, I always say in like 10, 15 years, 20 years, they're going to say Eminem uh, invented hip hop. 
Yo, <laughs> you ain't never. Yo, if the the way this shit is going, bro, they yo, he, they gonna say he was the forefathers. Wait, one man was the forefather. <laughs> was like, <laughs> they did it with Elvis and rock and roll. Like there was no Chuck Berry. Yeah, wait, it's so crazy though. <laughs> Cause they go in and they, wait, they just erase the fucking history books, and then it's the whole shit is like, mm -hmm. and, and then and I just want to parallel that with fucking Jay Z's four four four, cause I don't feel it was his mm -hmm. best album, but I feel like it was his most powerful album, cause as far as context and content, cause he's talking a lot of shit about ownership, your masters, all this shit, and you know, and when I and as far as what I extracted from it, and I'm looking at it like, bro, this is a lot of shit cats don't understand. It's like. They, they already had a 360 deal. Then they had to make a new 360 deal because they saw niggas was making mm -hmm. money outside of the 360 deal. <laughs> Remember, yo, people started, um, like, uh, what's the name? Uh, what's, I, I don't want to say no names. I ain't going to say no names. But the yo, dude out of Patterson, it was like, yeah, he, he got locked into a deal. And then he started doing shows outside of his deal. Like, he was hiding shows from his record label. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, why you ducking, you ducking your record label? Like, yeah, I, wait, that's, yeah, that's how you gotta eat them. No, real shit. Mm -hmm. Wait, they taxing everything. Wait, I'm gonna keep it G. I forgot the first artist. I'm trying to think back. I think it was Mac Miller. I'm not sure. I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but it was Mac <laughs> Miller, and he was doing shows. And he was, I forgot what it was, how to. But they were like, yo, he's making merch. He's getting show money. He's a, and it's like, yo, we're not getting none of this. We're only getting um, record sales and people aren't buying albums. And, you know, it was that, that transition where streaming and, you know, the labels was battling with iTunes and shit. And it's like, it was that gray area. And it was like, bro, it's like, niggas, I'm not, I, bro, fuck the labels. At the end of the day, fuck the labels. He's going to get robbed, yo. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, the biggest robbery is when niggas sign off their masters in the deal. The mm -hmm. biggest robbery. Because just look at it like this, man. I, I, I only say it's like, yo, that's why I tell niggas it's important to keep your masters because when you fucking walk into Walmart or when, when they used to sell CDs, but when you used to walk into Walmart and see those 20th fucking hit, 20th anniversary hits and shit, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, bro. That's the like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, I'm telling you, yes, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's so, why I, like, I give Daft Punk so much so much credit till this day. It's because they own it. Like, I didn't know they finessed that shit in the beginning. That was one of their biggest finesse. Like, yeah, they own their masters. I feel like they, they, they always write their they write they own, they write they own stuff. But I didn't know that they own their masters. Yeah, they own their masters, too. Mm -hmm. They was not fucking around. Mm -hmm. Like, even looking at the, look at the term itself to own your master, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, even that, that terminology is just fucking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'll just say defacing at the same time. Masters, like you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, no, why do you, why do you, you try you to find? Yeah, like you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They always trying to find a way to correlate shit in in in, 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 in fucking these situations. Cause I be, I be seeing that, man. It, I forgot. I was just talking this shit the other day. It was something off topic, but it was like, yo, you be watching some shit, and then there's somehow they'll make it into a politic, a political shit, and then be like, how did this shit even get there when we started here? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but hmm. it's spiritual warfare, but we can we we can talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nah, but real real talk, my nigga. But shit, man, it, it it was a fucking good cast, man. Like I said, it was a pleasure mm -hmm. having you on. I I ain't gonna keep you too mm -hmm. fucking long, but um, yo, I definitely gotta have you back, man, because I feel we got a lot mm -hmm. to talk about, even outside of music. We could just have like a conversation type shit. You mm -hmm. feel me? So mm -hmm. um, look, man, in probably six months, I'm gonna hit you again. Like, yo, I need you back on here, man. Hopefully, you could pull I'm up and do like the, the live shit. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I, even better, even better. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But um yeah, but yo, it's a pleasure. Um yo, keep doing your thing, my nigga. I love what you're doing with the kids. I love what you're doing, bro. Keep inspiring these youth, everything, bro. Um but before you get out of here, please tell the people where they can find you. Is there anything you're doing you want to promote? Please talk to me, man. Let, you know, um All right. Um yeah, you can find me at um uh, at on all social media at produced by R O C all one word. Um um 
And then, um, yeah, that's everything. Instagram. I'm not really on Twitter like that, but you can find me at Produced by ROC. Um, and then right now, the one of the premier projects I think that we've worked on is uh, Chilling Beef, which is on Revolt TV right now, Diddy Station. Um, it's called Killing Beef, Gun Violence in the Black Community. And um, I, I composed all the music for that as well. And um, so that's that's one of the latest projects. Oh my day. damn, we didn't even get to talk about hold up, hold up, hold up. We didn't even get to talk about that. Cause you mm-hmm. knocking these shits mm-hmm. down. You cause you just fully composed. This is your third one that I know of. That I know of. Because I know you probably got more under the belt. But I know you did the one I think in 2015. My wife saw the movie mm-hmm. and she fucking loved it. I forgot the Give name of the shit. With, yes, yeah. yes. Oh yeah. man. What? Yeah, thank you. She was like, this is a tearjerker. I was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But she, yeah, she loved it. She fucking loved it. And, and now I know for a fact 90% of that was because of the audio. Uh no, nah, we uh, me and Bones, me and Bones and um and thanks thanks to um Jack from Cobblestone, like we got three songs placed in that in, in that in that film. Mm, mm, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now I, I say that in the sense, though, just to compartmentalize, is that it's like how Mac Miller said in a way: you don't watch movies with, in, without the sound. You don't get that same yeah. reaction. You don't get that same emotion. You don't get so you feel me. So whether how they put it together, the theme, and I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. Like certain shit just fits perfectly. But then again, not to spend too much time there. But um, you got that one. Then I saw you doing the other documentary. Um, I forgot. Um, I don't want to sound like a nigga, man, but it was an old white lady with a, with a red hat. <laughs> she was talking. Oh, a way out? Huh? Mm, a way out? I think. I don't think. know. I think. Yeah. Based on yeah, based on no. I think he was playing the guitar for right. that one. Hmm. Oh, you talk oh, uh, real fishing with upstream. <laughs> oh, which. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which is the first, it's the first black first black produced fishing show. What? Yeah. Oh, wait. First, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I was about to let you go, but now you now you dropping gems on the way out. Wait, hold up. The first black produced fishing show. That's interesting. The, the first black solely produced fishing show. It's on the World Fishing Network and it's on the Outdoorsman Network. And hopefully coming to ESPN soon. So I think they're still kind of working that out. But um, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's not just a fishing show. They also uh, focus on humanitarian issues and environmental protection issues as well. So like, yeah, like how to save, almost like how to save the fish and stuff like that. Because obviously, not obviously, but we're having like a, um, a epidemic where like people are overfishing and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're having to like, save the fish and raise the fish from egg to uh, maturity and then re-release them back into the oceans and stuff like that because we're losing our fish. No, that's a fact. As well. You know. mm. That's interesting. Mm. Damn, bro. How you so now this is interesting. Cause when I say how you got tied up into that, it's cause you sound like you into fishing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I like fishing a little here and there, my nigga. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I only been <laughs> now I'm more now I'm interested like for real because of this, you know what I'm saying? Experience yeah. and understanding how how it works and what's going on. It, it makes me a little bit more interested in it too. Mm. You know, okay. We pollute the water and all that. So we yeah, we we figuring it out. No, I could definitely see because they're like shit like that BP spill. You know, mm-hmm. fucking, um, you know what's funny? This is a true story. This is why I, I gotta put the weed down sometimes. I forgot the name of that fucking movie. The fucking first hori- uh, horizon, first dawn, some shit. Oh, that 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 oil spell where they yeah. want to tanker. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know mm-hmm. that movie was about that. <laughs> Yo, I didn't even mm-hmm. know. I'm like, Yo, this is this is a wow. You know. This is crazy. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And, you know, 
had they not make if they don't make these movies or make that's 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 the important of like content creation and stuff like that too. If they don't make these movies and stuff about it, people just forget. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so yo, wait, and it's so crazy since you said that is because now that's why I was like, yo, I was talking to my man the other day and I was like, yo, Bohemian Rhapsody just came out. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, I can't wait to fucking watch it. Cause I didn't get the chance to go to the theater and shit. But then it's like the moment I found out it came out, I was like, damn, they're doing the Elton John movie. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, this is phenomenal. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm saying it in the sense that now they're doing movies of musicians. So mm-hmm. now you feel me? Cause they did comics. They did, um, like, you feel me? They did, they did all, all the other fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? They did all these mm-hmm. other, they did documentaries. They did mobsters. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now they're doing actual real people, musicians who, like you said, music that made, that transcended decades, timeless music, timeless musicians. So I'm like, that's what I love. But now they got to start doing like the real ones that, you know, and they've been doing the musician movies. Let's not get it twisted. They had the Motown shit, the five heartbeats. You get what I'm saying? So they've been doing them. But now they're doing them on the stage of like these like mega films, if that yeah. makes any sense. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they're making these shits like a blockbuster. And I'm like, all right. So, y'all, you feel me? It's like, they did the Jimi Hendrix shit. That shit was, was dope. Shout out to Andre. But they, why didn't they treat, why didn't they treat that shit like a straight to DVD shit? And yeah. they even fucking, these niggas, the motherfucking, the, and I'm not hating on them. They good musicians. It's by design. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The James Brown shit was some some straight to DVD. Mm-hmm. You know, you know the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, like I said, I'm giving credit because you know, I I know that they do musician movies, but how come when it's Elton John and fucking Queen, this shit? Is, yeah, but mm-hmm. IMAX. I don't think mm-hmm. James Brown got IMAX. I don't think he got Even- IMAX. What's his name from Queen? Uh, the the head, the leader from that movie didn't do that well. No. They swept with the rug. That no. the fact that shit is that good. Mm-hmm. I can't think of his name. Bro. I can't even think of his name right now. Yeah, that's crazy. No, I, I I didn't used to listen to Queen, but I was inspired. I was partly inspired by you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. His willingness to go out on stage and like captivate like millions of people and shit like that, but his music and stuff and the message, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was dope. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like they do put they artists in the headlight. You know, they they put them in the spotlight for sure. Oh, absolutely. They propel. And then the thing is, is that it, it, it's not to sound like a hater. It's just that. I feel like I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't know how to compel it right now because I'm high, but. I feel James Brown was either just as big or bigger than Queen what? or Elton John, probably combined. Because you got to understand, that nigga had his own band, himself, a symphony, and artists. Like, bro, he probably had more than I'm pro- I probably even think of. Ray Charles, mind you, Ray Charles did well, though. Ray Charles, the movie, yeah, oh, yeah with Jamie yeah. Foxx. Yeah, that did well. That did well. <laughs> Absolutely. But see, but that was at a time, you know what I mean? I feel like that was a time where it's like, yo, they, they, they hit the nail on the head, but I feel like they was really selling Jamie. I feel Jamie mm. was hot, and I feel like he was going to sell. It was going to sell regardless. If it make, excuse me, if it makes any sense. You know when a nigga's hot, you're like, niggas is going to pull up. You're hot. You feel me? Like, we heard Drake's in town. A lot of random hot bitches just show up out of nowhere. Like, what happened? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You peep how they always have to have like a Jewish savior or a white savior oh, in the scene. Absolutely. And like oh, I'm the one this the white guy was the one that helped propel or make his shit hot when it was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's always yeah. in the movie. Wait, it's it, always in the movie. NWA had that shit. NWA was the fucking perfect example of that shit. Exactly. It's always always just come one. right in. Perfect timing. Like you said, save shit. You, you got to let him go. You know, we need to do this and go in this direction. But nah, you absolutely mm-hmm. right, man. You absolutely right. But that, that was another film that did do good as well. But then again, I feel like there were so many big names in it. It's like, that was more mm-hmm. like, it's, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't feel like, you know, James Brown should have been a fucking IMAX. That's all I'm saying. If, mm-hmm. fucking, if, mm-hmm. if Queen and Elton John could get IMAX, same should, same should be James Brown. 
I don't give a fuck. Yeah. JB's and IMAX, you're not telling me that shit don't go sound good. Remastered? What? What, mm-hmm. nigga? Please. Turn that shit the fuck up. <laughs> it feels me? Mm-hmm. But shit, look, I ain't gonna keep you any longer, my nigga. Look, this was a fucking phenomenal cast, yo. Um, look, like I said, we're gonna get back up soon, hopefully sooner, like you said, in within the six months, and we're gonna make this shit mm-hmm. epic again, man. But like I said, uh, thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's a wonderful thing, man. Keep thriving, yo. Like I said, and until next time, my nigga, stay safe. All right, you too, my brother. Stay safe. Peace. Start to